Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now as you can see uh, we are picking back up uh, exactly where we left the last time. The last time we covered the initial setup for Italy, the wars in the Balkans uh, and now we are ready to start uh, and to dominate uh, World War II. We are going to completely outperform uh, Germany in uh, World War II. We are going to redeem the Italian honor. Before we start, let me just say that if you haven't watched the first video, this video may not make much sense. So make sure not to miss the initial setup for Italy and what led us to this situation. I will include the link in the description, but you can also find it up here. We have the main army here ready to push against France and the secondary army here ready to push against Poland. We have our motorized and cavalry in the northern part of Poland ready to push and get us as much uh, points for the worst score as possible. Our Alpini are protecting this harbor in uh, Northern Africa. As for the second theater, we have the Irregulari ready to push here against France. Our uh, defensive army, the first defensive army ready to protect Italy from naval invasions. Secondary defensive army is actually ready to attack in Syria. And the third defensive army is split into two groups, the first one ready to attack in the direction of Cairo and the second one ready to defend these harbors from possible naval, naval invasions. We have the volunteers from Yugoslavia ready to protect Greece and Turkey. We have the volunteers from Romania ready to protect this border and attack Poland from the south. And the Camicenere ready to protect Sardinia from naval invasions and eventually to attack into uh, Corsica. Our planes are almost entirely assigned to southern France, except for 200 fighters that we are going to keep in Italy to protect the, uh, it from uh, bombardments. As for our navy, it is entirely gathered in the northern part of Germany, ready to support the naval invasion of England when we decide it's time to proceed with that. Now we're going to wait, but as soon as the war starts, we're actually going to start the war ourselves against Poland. And we're also going to start a war against France, although it's uh, actually the same war. We're also going to start all of our offensives right away. And there are a couple more things we need to do before we unpause the game. The main one is we need to reduce the production of uh, fighters and cas, because we are not going to be able to afford it anymore without uh, rubber. So we're going to reduce the production to 5 for each one of them. And we're going to increase the production of guns to uh, 75 to the maximum. We are going to struggle a little bit uh, of course at the beginning because we are pushing into the mountains but do not worry this push is going to work eventually. Our offensive divisions are amazing and they are going to get it done. Now during the war the main thing you need to pay attention to is naval invasions from the UK and it looks like the UK is planning a naval invasion in the southern part of Turkey so we're going to send our Yugoslavian army right away. Now oh, as Poland is already going down, we can check the war score and we can start seeing how it's going. We want to keep it around 50% in the early phases of the war, but later on we want to pull ahead and push Germany behind. We want to end the war with around 60% of the war score. And our push in France, although difficult, is actually working pretty well. Pronto, signore. Now uh, that Poland is uh, down, we need to prepare our divisions uh, to attack the Netherlands. Again, uh, since we are not sure that Germany will call us right away, we are going to justify a war goal before they even call us, before they even start the war, so that we are ready for it uh, before they are. We are also going to use our motorized and cavalry army to attack uh, Denmark. We can start our push against the Netherlands right away. At the same time, we can start a justification on uh, Iraq. And Germany is pretty active at the moment. Uh, they immediately started uh, the offensive against Belgium as well. Now, as you already know, all of the researches and focuses are in the description of this video. And if you're following them, uh, you will now find the description uh, free in terms of uh, researches. That's because from this point onward, you can choose what you want to do. Since I plan to make tanks uh, later in the game, my researches are tank oriented and that's why we're going to pick the maintenance company one. But you don't need to follow the same path, you can pick something else. Of course, after the Netherlands is down, we start pushing Belgium immediately. Now, by this point of the war, France probably retreated most of their units to the mainland and uh, Corsica will not be heavily defended. Uh, this is the right time to start an offensive and go and get all of Corsica as well. Belgium is down and we can start uh, planning our offensive of uh, France. As we finish uh, justifying the war against Iraq, uh, we want to justify another one against uh, Iran. 
Now, as we are easily cutting into France, uh, you want to pay attention to one thing. There is one important thing here. If we take Paris, especially if we take Paris from the south of France, uh, so uh, from the Italian occupied territories, uh, then Vichy France uh, is not going to be created. It's not going to be formed. Now, depending on how you want it to play out, uh, you may want Vichy France to exist. I usually prefer Vichy France to exist. In that case, what you want to do is you want to stop your offensive in the south uh, and you want to make sure that it is uh, the Germans uh, who conquer Paris in the north. Now, France is about to capitulate, so this may be a good time to save the game and then make sure that uh, things go exactly how you wanted. So if you wanted Vichy France, uh, let the Germans take it. If you don't want Vichy France, try to rush Paris from the south instead. As you can see, since I wanted Vichy France to appear, I let the Germans take Paris. And that means uh, that Vichy France was formed. However, since we conquered part of it uh, and we conquered uh, Corsica, these two areas are going to stay under our control despite uh, the fact that Vichy France appeared. Now that France is down, we can start preparing our main army for the invasion of the UK. At the same time, we're going to use our secondary army for our wars against Iraq and Iran. It's now unlikely that the UK will start an invasion of Italy, so you can use uh, your first uh, defensive army in Italy and you can send it uh, to the border with Iran, ready to attack uh, into the Iranian territories as well. We also need to move uh, our planes, because uh, they are no longer needed here, and we are going to send them north uh, and start attacking the UK. For the naval invasion of the UK, what I suggest doing is uh, you can go from uh, Le Havre, and you can send three divisions to Dover. You send another three here, another three here, and the last one uh, here to further reinforce the push. We also want to start moving our navy uh, to this area. Hopefully it will not be intercepted by the uh, British uh, Royal Navy. Now, before we end the war, we want to get a few more claims. So we are going to get one on Vichy France first. And that is because we have a claim state. This uh, claim is never going to expire, so we can uh, take advantage of it. Same thing with Saudi Arabia. We're going to get a claim on Azir Makkah. And since it is a claim state, this will never expire. We're going to use them after the war. Now with that, we finished our claims on uh, Vichy France and uh, Saudi Arabia. We're going to get a few more claims. Uh, we want a claim on uh, Spain, uh, Portugal and Ireland as well before we end the war. So we're going to start with another two claims on uh, Spain and on Portugal. Meanwhile, our troops arrived uh, to Iraq, uh, so we can start our war against Iraq as well. And as soon as our divisions are ready, we can also start uh, the war against uh, Iran. Meanwhile, it may be wise uh, to start checking if we have the superiority in the English Channel. For this naval invasion, we need the superiority, and usually the fleet of Italy is enough to get it. Uh, let's see if this is the case. This seems to be the case. So as soon as we assign our navy to uh, naval superiority or naval invasion support uh, in the English Channel, our naval invasion will start. That's all we need. After the invasion has started, we don't need the superiority anymore and we can stop using our navy to uh, save it uh, from destruction. But sometimes it happens that this area remains yellow or red, which means the Royal Navy is around. In that case, uh, well, the Royal Navy keeps moving around and it's usually in the most useless places. I actually made a video about that, which was quite fun, but that's not the point. The point is, uh, you may want to wait uh, until the Royal Navy moves away, but if they don't move away, if they stay in the channel, you may want to replan uh, this naval invasion and do it uh, from this area of Germany instead. By getting the naval superiority over these two regions and invading one of the northern harbors. Now, since in this case everything is uh, fine, we can start our naval invasion and we can assign uh, the fleet uh, to uh, naval superiority in here. As you can see, the invasion started and uh, from this moment on uh, we will not have any issues anymore. As long as our divisions get there, the UK is usually very, very poorly defended. Let's see if this is the case uh, this time too. It seems to be the case. I don't think they have even one division protecting this area. And that is the case indeed. So, no one was here at all. Now that our invasion is done, we can start planning an offensive to conquer almost all of the UK. We can start it right away because they usually don't have many divisions anyways. 
Now, we also completed our claims on uh, Spain and on uh, Portugal, I believe. Uh, which means it's time to fabricate the last two claims that we want to get before the end of the war. We can get one on uh, Hungary. And we can get one on uh, Ireland. Oh, meanwhile, Iraq uh, is uh, down. Okay, we completed another two uh, claims. Uh, the last one, but this is entirely free, it's not necessary. But if you want, you can also get uh, a claim on uh, Switzerland. It still takes a lot, uh, but less than it would have uh, uh, otherwise, uh, if you were not at war. And uh, since it is a claim state, uh, this will never expire, so it's probably worth it. As we approach uh, Newcastle, the war is probably going to be over very soon. Let's check the United Kingdom. Yeah, 98%. So they are likely to capitulate as soon as we get Newcastle. This is the last chance to give a look to the war score. Make sure that you're happy with the, how things are going. And of course, we're very happy with how things are going. We have about 70% of the war score. That's a very, very high number. We're very satisfied with this. So we did everything we needed to do during the war and we are ready to finish it. Uh, let's just uh, keep pushing and end the UK and therefore end the war. Oh, at this point you may want to make a save just in case you forgot anything. Or in case you want to grind a bit more war score, in case you want to fabricate a few more claims. Uh, it's always good to have a save just before ending the war. Uh, do keep in mind that the Germans are eventually sending uh, uh, their armies uh, to the UK and if you do not push, uh, they will end up doing it. Uh, so you cannot uh, keep this up forever, but for a bit longer you can. The war is officially over, we got 70% of the war score. Not bad at all. This will be enough to get everything we need to get. And what is it that we need to get? Now, of course, I will not cover the peace conference in detail. That will be too long and too boring. But I will briefly talk about what you need, uh, what you absolutely need to get. And let's start with the obvious things. You need to get everything around the coastal area of the Mediterranean because you need those provinces uh, to reform the Roman Empire. The second priority will be to get everything that we can core with the Roman Empire, which, for example, includes Iraq as well. It includes France. It includes Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and all of the UK. So we want to take all of these for ourselves. We don't want to leave anything to Germany. And then we also want to pop it and get resource rights uh, and war reparations from these extremely rich regions uh, down here. I'll briefly talk about the most important ones as we proceed, uh, but these are the main things. Also, if you want to see what exactly you need uh, to recreate uh, the Roman Empire, I will add uh, in the description of this video the link to a map uh, from the uh, Hearts of Iron 4 wiki, which shows all of the territories you need uh, uh, colored in uh, red uh, to reform the Roman Empire, and all of the territories that you can core with the Roman Empire through decisions in uh, various colors. You can check that map to make sure you got everything you needed. Of course, the Germans are not going to be too happy that you want to take uh, France, the Netherlands and Belgium from them. But they don't have enough points to counter us, uh, so we're just going to keep demanding all of those uh, territories. I suggest getting these regions as puppets as well. They are very useful, especially later on if you want to start an invasion of the United States. Also, I suggest puppeting some of these uh, regions, which you did not conquer to leave a buffer between you and uh, potentially the Germans. If um, the German Reich decides to annex these territories, you don't want to border them directly. So you want to have some puppets in between. Okay, we are done. We got everything we wanted. Uh, now let's make sure to get uh, the war reparations and resource rights from all of the territories that we uh, puppeted. Also, what I would suggest doing is uh, make sure that there is nothing left uh, uh, to the UK. So if the German Reich forgot to puppet some areas, uh, get them so that you completely remove uh, the UK uh, from the game, which may be beneficial. And with the remaining points, uh, we are going to get as much of the Royal Navy as possible. You can select all of it and then you can remove uh, some of them uh, if they exceed uh, the points you have available. Once you're happy, you can confirm. And let's see what happened. This is the situation now. So with Italy we control more or less uh, half of the world. Uh, and we didn't leave much uh, to the German Reich. Uh, but this is just the beginning of the end uh, for the German Reich. Because now we have uh, the claims ready for a series of war that we're going to start right away. Now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to give stuff uh, to Mussolini. Since he already has uh, total dominance, uh, we can uh, give him uh, the uh, control over all of these ministries. Uh, which gives us some uh, bonuses. Uh, 
we have enough uh, political power to be able to afford that so there is no reason not to do it now you may already have it uh, if you finish the war a bit later but uh, other than that as soon as you finish uh, researching this technology which is the anti-tank upgrade you also want to start designing the new cast and for our new cast design we are going to use uh, this design here we're also going to slightly change our fighter's design because now we have access to a huge amount of rubber so we want to use the self-sealing fuel tanks instead of the armor plates at least one self-sealing fuel tank so we're going to use these as our improved uh, uh, fighter design and we also want to bring the production of both uh, f2 and uh, c2 uh, to 25 now if you were importing something you can stop doing that uh, because as you can see we have resources for the rest of the eternity all right it is the 15th of january our claims are about to expire so it is time to start our wars we are going to start all of them at the same time so we're going to start the war to ireland spain portugal vichy france hungary saudi arabia and i believe that's it uh, I will show you briefly how I assign my divisions, uh, it's not particularly important, you can do it differently, but our main army is ready to attack uh, Vichy France uh, from here, in fact we will start the offensive. Our secondary army will attack uh, Hungary and we can start the offensive, our motorized are in Ireland, we can start the offensive. Our Alpini are protecting Gibraltar, they will not attack for now because they are outnumbered. Uh, our Irregulari are going uh, to attack France, they were not exactly in position yet, uh, but they will get there soon, it's going to be fine. Our uh, defensive army will attack Saudi Arabia. Our other defensive army will attack uh, Vichy France. And the final defensive army is uh, just protecting Italy with nothing uh, to do. None of these wars is uh, uh, difficult, of course. Uh, in fact, they are very, very easy. Ireland is the first to go. And uh, we are going to take everything in Ireland because we can core it. After Vichy France, at least in the mainland, is uh, down, uh, you may want to reassign your army because we, gon we want to start an offensive against Spain as soon as possible. Also, around this time, uh, you should get a message saying that you can uh, reduce, uh, again, the autonomy of uh, Yugoslavia. This should bring it uh, to an uh, integrated puppet, which means there is only one last step uh, before annexing it. And here I want to show you a little trick uh, to annex your puppet very effectively and very fast. Now as you can see we need another 997 points to annex them. What I suggest doing at this point is you open the diplomacy, you go to start land lease and you give them convoys. Now, if you shift click here and increase the amount of convoys to send to Yugoslavia, you will see how many points we get uh, just by sending convoys. We needed about 1000 points and that is about 1500 convoys. We had uh, about 2300 convoys because we have been producing them for the entire game for this purpose. But the cool thing about this trick is that once you annex your puppet you get all of the convoys back so you can do this with all of your puppets one by one and just get the convoys back every single time so that's it we're going to send the convoys and very soon we're going to get the message that we can integrate uh, italian yugoslavia now we want to also start the production of anti-tank we are going to bring the production to 15 anti-tank as we get military factories we're also bringing up the trucks uh, to 5 uh, and uh, the support equipment uh, to 10 and then we're going to put everything else into the planes uh, while we are waiting for tanks uh, which we will be designing uh, later on in the game. Uh, in Northern Africa you may want to force uh, your divisions to go and get uh, Algeria. Uh, that's what all you need uh, to end the war. But yeah, my dudes for some reason were stuck here doing nothing. Oh, meanwhile Hungary is uh, down as well. Now, in terms of Hungary, there are three regions which you can core, which are these three, and two regions which you cannot core, and they suggest uh, puppeting them. This also has the advantage of reducing the border with the German Reich, should you decide to betray them and declare war to them while they're busy with the Soviet Union later on. I'm not saying that you should do that, but just in case. Saudi Arabia is also gone. Uh, same thing for Saudi Arabia. We cannot uh, actually core all of their territories. In fact, we can only core two. These uh, upper ones. And the rest uh, we can easily uh, puppet. 
uh, with three civilian factories at this point you can do whatever you want uh, and i suggest uh, you keep building military factories in the 100 percent regions of italy but i will not be covering that anymore because it's uh, entirely free from now on and finally we got uh, Vichy France, uh, now here it's a bit more important that you take uh, everything they have uh, in France of course, uh, you take the entire northern coast of the Mediterranean Sea and then the rest, well you can take this one too because you can give it to your puppets here. Uh, other than that you can just uh, puppet them now do keep in mind that if you puppet this area of france uh, you may have problems with japan later on so if you don't want to have problems with japan you may want to leave this uh, uh, free it's not like we really need these resources anyways but up to you uh, make sure that if they had something in uh, syria left uh, you take that too because you need it for the roman empire okay and as you can see our convoys arrived uh, to yugoslavia which means we can now easily annex them and uh, let's check our convoys here we have 976 uh, and as soon as we annex them we are back to 2502 and so we got back all of our convoys also as you start researching tanks uh, you may also want to get fiat the tank designer to make him uh, to make them a bit cheaper to research that's really the last thing we need here we don't need anything else Okay, Portugal is down, and in Portugal as well, we are going to take uh, everything on the mainland, and we are going to puppet everything else. We're going to take their navy as well, of course, uh, and resource rights, war operations, uh, all that stuff. And Spain uh, should follow very soon. There we go. Same thing for Spain as well, uh, just remember to take everything uh, on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Actually, you don't need this thing, and then we are going to take everything in Spain. And we're going to puppet everything else. Uh, and we get uh, resource. We don't have. They don't have resource. They don't have anything. We take their navy. Now we are done with all of our wars. Everything is ready to reform the Roman Empire, and we already have most of the territories that can be reintegrated in the Roman Empire. Now the only thing we need to wait for is the right focus, Mare Nostrum. We need uh, about one month and a half. Uh, uh, to get it and then we will finally be able to recreate the roman empire now this is something which is entirely optional but at this point of the game what i usually do is i leave uh, the faction of germany and i actually start spying on germany because i plan to attack them very soon either while they're busy fighting the soviet union or even before that that's entirely up to you one last thing that you can do if you want you can also start a war against switzerland and you can take switzerland too since it can be reintegrated in the uh, roman empire as well it's up to you uh, that will also extend a little bit the front uh, against uh, germany switzerland is also a bit annoying to conquer so i will not actually do it in this run i may do it later and there we go, we just completed uh, Mare Nostrum, which means we now have access uh, to the decision Mare Nostrum, which will uh, recreate uh, the Roman Empire. We are ready, and uh, let's do it. The Imperium Romanum is back. It's huge, but not only that, not only the Roman Empire is back, we already have most of the territories we needed, and we have the political power to reintegrate massive regions like Hispania, Britannia, Gaul, which is France, Moesia is another huge one, we can get Turkey in it as well, we can get the area of Belgium, we can get Pannonia, and that's it. Now, uh, look at the manpower, 10 million, and look at the amount of factories that we have available now. We are extremely powerful and uh, we are ready to proceed with this run uh, in which we are basically strong enough to do whatever we want. Uh, it's mostly up to you uh, how do you, you decide to continue this run. Not only we got the Roman Empire, but as you can see we control as puppets uh, about half of the world. Of course there are a few challenges ahead, the German Reich, the Soviet Union, the United States. I believe I will continue this run, I will continue it uh, in English, I'm sorry for my Italian friends, but I believe it will have uh, a bigger audience if it is in English. So for the next few videos I'm probably going to dedicate at least some of them uh, to uh, continuing this run. Uh, it's not going to be a guide, uh, just a normal playthrough. I'll try to reduce the editing a little bit uh, because it's uh, quite uh, time consuming. So I want to try a more free run. I hope you were able to follow this guide up to this point. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, let me know in the comments how it went for you. If you had any difficulties. If you struggled with anything. If you need any help I'm always available. 
as i said for the previous video a lot of work went into this guide so if you enjoyed it uh, please don't forget to leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel but also comment let me know in the comments everything you think about it if you have any ideas on how to further improve it as well other than that as always thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys